Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here on such a glorious day in Anthem to celebrate our veterans. I'm Neil Shear, the CEO of the Anthem Community Council, and it's my privilege to welcome you to our annual Veterans Day ceremony. Let's begin with a warm thank you to the Arizona Veterans Band for their opening music this morning. Every Veterans Day is special because of what it means. However, many don't know how this holiday came to be. In November 1919, one year after the silencing of weapons at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918 to end World War I, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day. He said, to us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the thing from which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of nations. An act approved May 13, 1938, made the 11th day of November each year a legal holiday. It was a day set aside to, to the cause of world peace and to be thereafter celebrated and known as Armistice Day. At that time, the holiday honored only veterans of World War I. But in 1954, after World War II had required the greatest mobilization of soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen in the nation's history, and after American forces had fought aggression in Korea, the 83rd Congress, at the urging of veterans service organizations, amended the Act of 1938 by striking out the word armistice and inserting in its place the word veterans. With the approval of this legislation on June 1st, 1954, by President Dwight D. Eisenhower, November 11th became a day to honor American veterans of all wars. And that is why we are here today on Veterans Day. At this time, I'd like to invite Pastor Jessica Scholes, who serves as the co-pastor at Anthem's Grace North Church, to provide our invocation. The invocation will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the singing of our national anthem performed by the Musical Theater of Anthem's Outreach Group. Pastor Scholes. Would you stand and join me for a word of prayer? Almighty God, you know every veteran by name. You know their deeds, their hard work, and their perseverance. You know their needs, both material and spiritual. Please draw each one closer to you and grant them all the peace that passes understanding, the peace of Christ to rule in their hearts, and joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at the right hand of God forever. Almighty God, Lord of hosts, we call out to you as the one who is sovereign over all. Watch over and protect our nation's military members and their families. Sustain them with your everlasting arms. As they serve around the world, we ask that you guard their families and loved ones back home. Provide them with peace and surround them with love as they mourn the absence of their loved one and long for their return. May they find hope and strength in you for the trials of each new day. Be with the military children who endure the difficult burden of knowing their father or mother is in harm's way and far from home. Guard these children's hearts and minds despite any loneliness or uncertainty of having a parent deployed. For each and every veteran who has served our country through the years, we thank you for their service. Comfort those who struggle in life after war. Help us to honor and care for those who have given us so much. Be with our nation's leaders as well, and all those who make decisions for our military. Give them wisdom and discernment in everything they do. Father God, we long for the day when swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. We long for your peace in our world. Today, we honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. 
We pray that you will bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service in the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, and our country's heritage for us all. Bless them abundantly beyond measure for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they've made, and the different contributions they've made to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, we are proud of them. We pray that you will watch over these special people and bless them with peace and joy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale For those visiting us for the first time today, allow me to give you a little background about this special place where we are gathered. The Anthem Veterans Memorial, dedicated on November 11, 2011, and not coincidentally, at 11.11 11 a.m. Since then, ceremonies have been hosted here every Veterans Day and Memorial Day, and almost 1,800 pavers have been laid in the circle of honor behind me to honor veterans for their service. Thousands have attended the ceremonies here, with millions of others learning about the memorial in other ways. Today we celebrate Veterans Day on this site, as well as the ongoing commitment and tradition we have established in this community to honor our servicemen and women and their families. 2019 has marked a couple of other notable anniversaries that we would be remiss in overlooking. The 80th anniversary of the beginning of World War II on September 1st, 1939, and the 75th anniversary of D-Day on June 6, 1944. On that fateful September day in 1939, Germany invaded Poland, which led Britain and France to declare war on Hitler's Nazi state in retaliation. Sixteen days later, on September 17th, Soviet troops invaded Poland from the east. After five long years and millions of lives lost, Allied forces of Britain, America, Canada, and France attacked German forces on the coast of Normandy, France. With over 150,000 soldiers, the Allies attacked, and that victory became the turning point for World War II in Europe. Throughout today's ceremony, we'll pause to remember these dates in our nation's history and those who served and sacrificed. At this time, please turn your attention to the screen as we listen to the words 
that General Dwight D. Eisenhower delivered to the troops as they prepared for the Normandy invasion and view images from that time as a reminder of what it means for us today. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940-41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Service members of all branches turned the tide of the war in 1944, just as they have served in every conflict and war throughout our history. It is a tradition at our ceremony and at ceremonies nationwide to honor veterans of all wars in all branches with their respective military service branch tunes. This morning, our musical theater of anthem vocalists will lead us in a medley of these songs. All veterans who currently serve or who have served in the U.S. Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, or Coast Guard, please stand as you're able when your respective service branch song is sung. For audience members who know the tunes, and frankly, even if you don't, sing along with us this morning. Lyrics are printed in your program. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might And the army goes rolling along Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won And the army goes rolling along Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way Count off the cadence loud and strong For wherever we go, you will always know That the army goes rolling along From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battles in the air, on land, and sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. Anchors away, my boys, anchors away. Farewell to college joys, we sail at break of day. Through our last night on shore, drink to the foam. Until we meet once more, here's wishing you a happy voyage home. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, swimming to meet our thunder, and a boy is here the gun. Down they dive, sprouting our flame from under, off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame, we go down in flames, ain't nothing will stop the U.S. Air Force. ready for the call. We place our trust in thee. Through surf and storm and howling gale, why shall our purpose be? Semper Paratus is our guide, our fame, our glory too. To fight, to save, 
was outstanding musical theater of Anthem. Thank you so much, and to all of you, thank you for your service. If I may take an additional moment to ask all of, you, all of those who have actively, who are actively serving our nation or who are part of the reserves, please stand now to receive our appreciation. This past Saturday, the Daisy Mountain Veterans hosted their annual parade through Anthem with veteran submariners serving as Grand Marshals. At this time, would all those who served as Grand Marshals please stand to receive our gratitude. Those submariners like to lay low. They lay low. We also recognize and thank a very active and engaged U.S. Army recruiting station in Anthem. Under the command of Staff Sergeant Rigoberto Portillo, would you please stand, Rigoberto? Thank you. We'd like to invite anyone who has recently enlisted or plans to enlist or enter the service as an officer between now and our next ceremony to stand and receive our thanks and good wishes. We are reminded that in each war fought, prisoners are taken. 142,246 American soldiers have been held as prisoners of war throughout our nation's history. 130,000 of these prisoners of war were in World War II. More than 17,000 died in captivity, while others endured their captivity and returned home. Today, nearly 83,000 American military personnel remain missing in action in conflicts and wars since World War II. Any former POWs, or those who are listed as MIA and returned home, please stand to be honored as you are able. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the young man who stood on the second row here, Air Force Colonel Tom Kirk, was shot, day, shot down over Hanoi two days after the late Senator John McCain had spent five and a half years in the Hanoi Hilton um, and is an incredible inspiration to all of us. Colonel Kirk, thank you for being here. The five benches that surround the Anthem Veterans Memorial signify family members who wait for their loved ones, for they also serve. The benches also remind us that waiting often means never having a proper goodbye. At this time, will all family members of current and former servicemen and women and any Gold Star families here with us today please stand to be honored as your service and sacrifice to this nation is greatly appreciated. The Anthem Veterans Memorial is a proud participant in the Vietnam War Commemoration Program. President Obama designated this as an official national proclamation. From May 28, 2012 through November 11, 2025, our nation commemorates and honors Vietnam War veterans as their service was not properly recognized at the end of the war. The official 50th anniversary Vietnam War flag flies at the memorial each Veterans Day and Memorial Day commemorating 2,709,000 U.S. soldiers deployed and the 58,202 U.S. service members who died or remain missing. Their battles were fought in jungles over mountains and through oceans and rivers or, as we say, over land, air, and sea. Would all Vietnam-era veterans please stand at this time to be honored?
Grant. Thank you. Thank you for your service. We are honored in Anthem to have a family of veterans who support and serve each other, as well as the community at large. As I announce these groups, please stand to receive our appreciation. They are members of the Daisy Mountain Veterans and President Dennis Salisbury. Dennis. The veterans of foreign wars and Commander Chuck Hale. Chuck. <laughs> Members of the American Legion and local commander Tim Pascarelli. And the members of the North Valley Women Veterans. <laughs> Several youth organizations show tremendous support for our military and veteran community as well. With the following groups, please stand and receive our thanks. Youth for Troops and their advisor, Tanya Pyatt. North Valley Young Marines and their advisor, Marwa Cabell. Those who volunteer with the Veterans Heritage Project. And already standing, the Sandra Day O'Connor Junior Air Force ROTC, Commanders Lieutenant Colonel John Simmons and Master Sergeant Michael Beatty. Thank you all. One of the highlights of our Veterans Day ceremony of late has been the student speaker. Two years ago, Shana Edwards from Prescott Valley joined us delivering her Voice of Democracy essay about what patriotism meant to her. Last year, Boulder Creek High School student and Veterans Heritage Project President Emma Suttle delivered a riveting address about the importance of preserving our veteran stories for future generations to remember. Today, we are privileged to welcome Kyle Pullen. This spring, Kyle was named the Arizona champion and second place nationally in the Voice of Democracy essay contest when he was a senior at Chaparral High School in Scottsdale. Open to eligible high school students, the VFW's annual Voice of Democracy essay requires entrance to write and record a three to five minute script on a democratic patriotic theme. This year, more than 40,000 high school students uh, from across the world reflected on the theme, Why My Vote Matters. National finalists competed for their share of $150,000 in scholarships, and Kyle is putting the $16,000 scholarship that he earned for his essay as well as his four-year merit-based prestigious Flynn Scholarship to good use at Barrett Honors College at ASU, where he is now a pre-med student. Please join me in welcoming Kyle Poland to the stage. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be given the opportunity to speak for such a distinguished crowd of veterans and guests attendees. Last year, my aunt handed me an old World War I medal and said, here, if you want it, it's yours. It belonged to your great grandfather, but I don't know anything about it. I took it, of course, because it's really impressive looking. And I was glad to have it, but basically it just went from sitting in a drawer in her house to sitting in a drawer in my house. But after a while, I started to get interested. It turns out this medal that had rarely seen the light of day for decades had an important story to tell about why my vote matters. First, allow me to end any suspense about the medal itself. It's no medal of honor, but it has a nice name. It's called the Victory Medal. At first, I was intrigued. Had my great-grandfather been recognized for an action that helped lead us to victory in World War I? I was a little deflated to later learn that it's a participation medal, meaning every soldier received one after the war. Undeterred, I did a little more research into his service, hoping to find stories of heroism and bravery. As it turns out, there aren't lots of opportunities to exhibit heroism and bravery when you're assigned to the 320 Mobile Laundry Unit. So if my chest were to swell with pride, it would be for other reasons. 
Ultimately, it did indeed. Finally, it dawned upon me that this modest little medal tucked away in a drawer carries a powerful reminder for all of us. Participation involves sacrifice and service, principles that make this country great. Those who served in Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam, Korea, World War II, and all conflicts before and in between did so to defend the American way. I would do them all a dishonor if I did not use an important gift they gave me, the gift to vote and have my voice heard. My great-grandfather was my first ancestor to arrive in this country, arriving a few years after World War I broke out. He came from an impoverished village in Russia, and it was unthinkable for the ruling powers there to ever grant people like him and his community the right to vote. He left a place hearing, whatever your opinion, you will not be heard, and arrived in a land where you will be heard, whatever your opinion. His voice in this country was not heard initially in an audible sense. Shortly after his arrival at Ellis Island, he ventured west to claim his piece of the American dream. He became a homesteader in South Dakota, meaning he was given a piece of very remote land as long as he agreed to live on it and work for seven years. He was very isolated with nobody to talk to for miles in every direction. Sometimes he would try out his voice just to make sure it worked. While it did still work, only the coyotes, rattlesnakes, and pheasants could hear him. These creatures would have been the only audience for his political opinions as well. As, though not yet a citizen, uh, he had not earned the right to vote. This would change in a couple of years. He enlisted in the army, gave up his homestead, and headed off to Europe to fight fight stains, as it turned out. When he returned, he became an American citizen and never missed a vote for the next 60 years. The last election was the first time I was old enough to vote. I probably speak for most 18-year-olds when I say there's a good amount of excitement as the first opportunity approaches. I was eager to cast my vote. From my perspective, I cannot comprehend why so many people have concluded that their vote does not matter, and a voter turnout of 60% is somehow considered strong. I would like to show those non-voters the participation medal and explain to them the sacrifice our servicemen and women endured to give them the right to suffrage. I would explain the situation like this. I would take their argument and draw it to its logical conclusion. Individuals see the millions of votes cast, thinking their one vote won't make a difference. By that same logic, if my great-grandfather had not enlisted, we would still have won the war, albeit with dirtier uniforms. However, if we apply a multiplier to both of those situations, if masses of citizens take the attitude that their participation doesn't matter, then their non-participation will matter in much more onerous ways. My vote matters, and your vote matters. Whether it's your first time like me, or you've had plenty of opportunities, whether you live on an isolated homestead in the middle of nowhere, or just down the street from the National Mall in Washington, DC, let's honor those who came before us. Let's acknowledge the sacrifices of those who serve to preserve this right. Never underestimate the power of participation. And let's all get out to vote. Thank you.
That was beautiful. Thank you. And thank you, Kyle, for reminding us that participating in our communities in the act of voting are essential pieces in recognizing and respecting the sacrifices of those men and women who fought for our freedoms. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and you are welcome to visit us in Anthem at any time. Also, thank you to Musical Theater of Anthem again. Lovely rendition of America the Beautiful. It is now my privilege to introduce to you today's keynote speaker. The story behind how we connected with U.S. Army and Army Reserve's Chief Warrant Officer Matthew Woodruff is unique. Upon learning that our keynote speaker from last year, Mr. Jim Zwitt, had been chosen for an honor flight to Washington, D.C., we began digging a little deeper into the honor flight organization. We stumbled upon an article about Mr. Woodruff and the 2017 flight on which he served as a guardian for World War II veteran, Mr. Jim Galgano, and we were inspired. As you'll, as you'll learn in a few mo moments, Matt's job makes him pretty hard to find. However, never to shy away from a challenge and fueled by our inspiration, we located the address for who we thought might be Matt and sent an old-fashioned letter. He responded after receiving it, confirming that he was indeed the same Matt Woodruff from that honor flight we read about. Sometime later, he met with us here at the memorial. After learning its history and significance, Matt felt that he had to be a part of our story. That brings us to today. Matt has longed, logged 21 years of service in the Criminal Investigation Department with the U.S. Army and Army Reserves, and served multiple deployments in the Gulf War, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom. He began a career with UPS Worldwide in 1994, and over the span of his 25-year career, has worked in locations ac across the country. Just days after we met with Matt here at the memorial, he left Anthem to take his current post. If we had sent our letter just a few days later, Matt, it may never have reached you, but um, some call that chance, we call it serendipity. Matt now serves as the Director of Security for the Southern California UPS District, where he oversees security affairs and is responsible for the safety and protection of all assets in Southern California, Hawaii, and Southern Nevada. Matt earned his master's degree in security management from the American Military Academy and is pursuing a second master's degree in Homeland Security. That impressive biography aside, what caught our attention about Matt is that despite several deployments of his own, the honor flight on which he accompanied Mr. Galgano gave him a different perspective about military service. That honor flight carried only World War II veterans, and Matt's time with those 23 heroes shifted his focus. In the article about the flight that we read, he said, I have had an engaged military career with many life-defining experiences, but the respect I gained for the World War II veterans on that flight was life-changing, end quote. Yesterday, in a private ceremony, Matt laid pavers for Mr. Galgano and himself side by side in our circle of honor. Much to our delight, Mr. Galgano, who recently celebrated his 101st birthday, is here with Matt today. That's it. Stand up. Those service branch songs give me chills, but nothing like that. Um, Mr. Golgano, thank you so much for being here. Uh, please join me in welcoming Matt Woodruff to the stage. I guess I'm lucky to follow Kyle, uh, very impressive speech. Um, 
Thank you, you set the bar high. Uh, distinguished guests and speakers, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's ceremony and thank you for attending. I'm honored to be speaking to you today to such an important occasion on, at this great venue. We're here to honor our service members, veterans, veteran families, and to remember the sacrifices that have been made by many. The courage it took to defend, honor, duty, and country is here today. The writer, the writer Michelle de Monache once said, valor is stability, not of legs and arms, but of courage and the soul. We're here today to honor our heroes, to remember their achievements, their courage and their dedication, and to say thank you for their sacrifices. Thinking of those her heroes today who join us in this group, who are here only in spirit, a person can't help feel awed by the enamoredy of what we encountered. We stand in the midst of patriots and the family and friends of those who have nobly served. Look around you, beside you, behind you, in front of you. Service members amongst all of us, or you yourself one who exemplify the valor that Monastage spoke of. Today, on a personal level, I am here also to, to honor a special guest, Jim Galgano, a World War II veteran and a hero to me. I met Jim in May 2017 when I volunteered for Honor Flight Arizona. Upon the flight, I lost contact. You know, the, the technology today is cell phone losing all your contacts. And I was not able to locate him. With the help of Christy and the special event, I have been re re reunited with someone who truly touched my life, even though it was only a week. Jim turned 101 a few weeks ago, so reuniting with him today is even more special. Please join me again in saluting Jim. Your service and for your birthday uh, is impressive. The Honor Flight mission statement is to fly America's military veterans to Washington, D.C. in order to visit the memorials built to honor their service and sacrifice. It's at no expense to the veterans. That trip was even further unique, as was stated, because it encompassed 23 World War II veterans. Since that time, veterans from one of the wars in Korea and Vietnam as well as Gulf War, have begun taking these flights as well. These 23 veterans had never visited these monuments or memorials in Washington, D.C. On that trip, I was assigned as a guardian for Jim. Every veteran on an honor flight is assigned a guardian for the entire trip, including the guardian sharing a room with the veteran. Yes, we were bunk mates. They basically become ins inseparable for the entire week. A guardian's responsibilities on the trip start at the airport upon departure. They assist with veteran with paperwork, boarding passes, provide physical support if they're in a wheelchair for the duration of the trip. We assist the, the veteran with boarding and exiting the plane and ground transportation. Most of all, a guardian makes sure that the veterans have a memo uh, memorable experience throughout the whole week. Jim often referred to me on that trip as his bodyguard. But in all honesty, Jim on that trip was my savior. You could ask, how was Jim my savior? You might be asking, right? And speaking at length in Jim in that trip, he discussed he and his three brothers and what they had done in World War II. How, and, and their service and how his life had been forever impacted. I took solace in the fact that no matter what trials and tribulations I may have in my own life, Jim reminded me the importance of showing love to your family, having faith, working hard every day in every way, and have those tenets will help guide you through what war does to a person. Whether it's the memories of the war, PTSD, injuries, and anything else that may face you. 
After my own deployments to the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan, I can say that meeting Jim and the other 22 World War II heroes put everything I'd experienced into perspective. I also came to realize that Jim's experiences did not compare to what I had seen during my deployments. The enamority of World War II evades most people in this crowd. In that war alone, 25 million men and women lost their lives in battle. That's the current population of Australia. 416,800 men and women were from the United States. The soldiers in World War II on the beaches and in the air achieved unthinkable defeats and performed unbelievable actions. As I learned in more detail through the stories I was told on that honored flight trip, as I mentioned, I learned Jim had three brothers who also served in World War II. Can you imagine both the pride and agony of Jim's parents during those years? On my flight, I also met Martin, who served in the Philippines during World War II. Then there was Ray, who joined with six of his best friends and was injured on the beaches of Iwo Jima by a grenade. And Mary, one of two female veterans on the flight who was a nurse in World War II and who became a true inspiration to me and exemplifies what it means to be a Marine. Every person I met, every story I heard has stuck with me to today. Being a guardian on the flight, Arizona was a top five moment in my life and military career. I would say that the four, four items on my life list are meeting my wife, Elizabeth, having two fantastic successful boys, Troy and Hunter, currently being a director for security for UPS, and recently making the CW3 promotion list. Balancing a family, being in an executive position, and a military career has given me re many reasons to be happy, yet my connection with Jim filled a need I didn't even know I existed in my life. Speaking of my family today, my son Troy is here, and he is currently a senior at ASU and is in ROTC, Go Devils. Following this year, he will become uh, going into the US Army as a second lieutenant, so I guess I'll have to salute him. His branch is soon to be uh, announced. He's hoping for EOD, which is Explosive Ordinance. As long as I can remember, my son was wanting to serve and be in the military from junior ROTC to ROTC. Troy shares a powerful memory with me and others back from 2009. At age nine, when my family was taking me to the airport to deploy to Iraq and Afghanistan, a memory that probably hits home for many in this audience. He will share that as I kissed my wife and youngest son goodbye, I looked at him and told him, take care of the family. You are the man in the house while I'm gone. Again, he was nine. That was a tall order for such a young boy. That also was a moment that Troy decided that he wanted to serve, and I could not be more proud of his decision to answer the call. Troy will be a fourth generation military member in our family going back to his great grandfather. My youngest son, Hunter, who is not here today, has fallen in his dad's footsteps as well within the security industry. He's enrolled as a freshman in college studying cybersecurity. His intellect and pure drive in studying computer fields and cybersecurity makes me very proud. Troy, Jim, and I, and hundreds that are here today are just like millions of Americans who fought on the battlefields here and abroad to defend our freedoms and way of life. Today, our troops continue to make the ultimate sacrifice. And even as we lose troops, even more Americans step forward to say, I am ready to serve. They follow in the footsteps of generations of fine Americans like those in my family and like Kyle mentioned in his speech moments ago. They want to participate. They want to serve. They feel it is part of their duty, and they want to enact their voice in democracy to answer the call. We have awarded many medals to many soldiers, some for being part of a larger picture, like Kyle's grandfather, or great-grandfather, excuse me, some for wounds sustained in combat or extraordinary acts of courage. We've added their names to monuments 
like those, the one behind me. We named buildings after them to honor them for their bravery. But nothing can ever replace the, the hole left behind by a fallen service member. And no number of medals or ribbons can comfort the ones left behind. The service members we honor here come from all walks of life, but we all share several fundamental qualities. We all possess courage, pride, determination, selflessness, and dedication to duty and integrity. All the qualities needed to serve a cause larger than one's self. Many of us ask, many of us here today didn't ask to leave our homes and to fight on distant battlefields. Many didn't even volunteer. We didn't go to war because we loved fighting. We were called to be part of something bigger than ourselves. We were ordinary people who responded in extraordinary ways. And for Jim and many others in extreme times, we rose to the nation's call because we wanted to protect a nation which has given us so much. Today, just like we're doing, people throughout the country will gather today to remember, to honor, and to demonstrate gratitude to those who have served. Our gathering is just one small spark in the flame of pride that burns across the nation today, and to be honest, every day. It's not a lot, but it's one small way we can honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so we can live in ultimate freedom. Your presence and the presence of those across America also is a tribute to those lost troops and to their families. It is one, say, one, it is one way to say we will remember and we shall never forget. In closing, I'd like to challenge you all to get involved in some way after you leave this place. So often, gatherings like this last an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and then we go back to our normal lives and forget there's the next chapter that has yet to be written. A chapter that will impact generations after us, just as Jim and his brothers and all those wrote before us. I challenge you to join the military or talk to somebody about doing so. Volunteer with VFWs and American Legions. For the young kids out there, join Junior ROTC. Join ROTC in college. Sign up to be an honored flight guardian on a flight and meet a hero just like I did who will forever change your life. Go to a veteran's home and visit with them about all they have given. Do a service project for them as a token of gratitude. Get involved with the Veterans Heritage Project. Sign up to make care packages for deployed troops or, de or adopt a family of a service member for the holidays. And please, as Kyle stated, exercise your right to vote. Embody Montessori's definition of valor and show others your courage and your soul through actions like these. Jim, thank you for attending today. Thank you for everybody for attending today. Thank you for answering the call of duty if you did so. You have made our armed forces the most respected in the world. God bless you, God bless your families, God bless our troops, and God bless America. Thank you.
Thank you, Matt, for your wonderful and heartfelt address and for your service. And one more time, Mr. Galgano, thank you, sir, for everything you've done for our country. As Matt mentioned, um, we're glad that uh, Troy could be with us today and all the best with your military career, career, Troy. And we understand his son, Hunter, is watching online. Yesterday, to commemorate the beginning of his military service, Troy placed his paver next to his father's and Mr. Galgano's in the circle of honor behind me. We wish you both all the best in your um, respective careers. At this time, Anthem Community Council Pre Board President Terry Malarkey will present this year's Veterans Service Award. Thank you, Neil. Well, hello, Anthem and friends of Anthem. Thank you so much for coming today. And thank you, thank you, veterans, for your service. On behalf of the Anthem Community Council Board of Directors, I am honored to present the annual Veterans Service Award. This recognition was developed to honor veterans who continue to serve their community after their service to a country has ended or community members or groups who work on behalf of veterans. A plaque bearing the names of the honore honorees is proudly displayed in the Anthem Civic Building. And with all past recipients of this award in the audience today, please stand, stand up so we can recognize you. Today, joining the impressive list of past recipients, I'm honored to present the Anthem Veterans Service Award to a gentleman in our community whose reputation precedes him. He is highly regarded for his valor and service to his country, but also those of us in Anthem know him more for his vision to build an amazing award-winning Anthem Veterans Memorial. Today, we are privileged to honor Rear Admiral Ron Tucker. Admiral Tucker, if you'd like to come up to the podium, please. It was Admiral Tucker's vision that led to the Anthem Veterans Memorial becoming a reality. His support of the memorial and the ceremonies here has been unmatched. He has served as master of ceremonies, a keynote speaker. He has recruited and hosted other speakers for these events. He has nominated others for as well as presented the Anthem Service Award in the past. Outside of Anthem, Admiral Tucker is a member of the prestigious Arizona Veterans Hall of Fame, and he raised over $2 million in Arizona and $54 million nationally towards the restoration of the Pearl Harbor Visitor Center in Hawaii. The Admiral and his, yes, thank you. The Admiral and his wife, Christy, annually host a reception on Veterans Day in order to honor service members. Admiral Tucker himself served 32 years active duty in the United States Navy as the commander of Task Force 73, director of service warfare programs, commanding officer of the USS New Jersey, Naval Station Pearl Harbor, and the USS Cochran. Love of family and country, service and commitment to veterans are the very essence of Admiral Tucker. From protecting our freedoms as a distinguished naval officer and through his many community service and veteran efforts, Admiral Tucker embodies the definition and criteria for the At Anthem Veterans Service Award. A quote from one of the nominations that we received reads, shadows of Ron's vision, and literally, we are gonna see the shadow in just a moment, shadows of Ron's vision will continue to impact others for generations to come, as his legacy and that of the Anthem community are forever intertwined. We couldn't agree more, Admiral Tucker. Congratulations. I just want to uh, thank, <clears throat> thank the council and thank uh, the staff, especially Christy, um, 
for just doing an awesome job, and I want to thank Anthem for adopting this memorial. Thank you all. Thank you, Board President Malarkey, and congratulations, Admiral Tucker. Uh, our nation and community are better because of your service, and you have been a personal inspiration to me. As we approach the end of our ceremony, I'd like to acknowledge our ceremony participants. Please hold your applause until we have named all of the uh, folks involved in today's program. We are especially appreciative of our, of our speakers, Matt Woodruff, Kyle Pollan and Pastor Jessica Scholes, thank you. Special thanks to our Air Force Junior ROTC cadets, the Arizona Veterans Band under the direction of Tony Gonzalez, and the Musical Theater of Anthem Outreach Group under the direction of Jackie Hammond with support from Jessica Kishbaugh for sharing their talents and providing us with musical inspiration today. Thank you, thank you all. And to all who have come from near and far, we thank you for being with us this morning. There are two local foundations that supported today's ceremonies through grants, the Arizona Department of Veteran Services and the Safeway Albertsons Foundation. Brightview Landscapes also provided a generous donation for today's event. Please join me in thanking them for their support. As we approach the 11th minute of the 11th hour, and as the sun's rays shine upon the great seal of the United States, I ask that you think about the millions who have served to protect our freedoms. Please take time to thank our veterans each and every time you see them. We know that each of you wants to witness the solar spotlight on the Great Seal, and so that everyone may see, and out of concern for your safety, we, we ask that you all remain seated and look to the LED screen where the spotlight will be shown live and in real time. Seeing it on the screen guarantees everybody a front row seat, and it provides for a safer conclusion to our program. Once the memorial can safely be reopened, in about 20 to 30 minutes following the spotlight, please, please allow time to, to remove the ropes and do not uh, crowd the memorial or the cadets. Please also be patient when approaching the memorial and please do not ever stand on the glass mosaic of the Great Seal of the United States. In closing, I'd like to mention one more occasion that, marked, that was marked in 2019 the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, which we observed in July. In his book, The Last Man on the Moon, late astronaut Gene Cernan wrote, I spent years searching for the next big thing, constantly asking myself, where now? I realize that other people look at me differently than I look at myself because of what I have done. I have come to accept that and the enormous responsibility it carries, but as for finding a suitable encore, nothing has ever come close." End quote. His words are not unlike those said by any of you here today who have served in our armed forces. We know that nothing has ever come close to the things that you've seen and done and there is nothing that comes close to sufficient gratitude that we, as the recipients of freedom, have because of you. Thank you. Many of you know the words to our final song, 
So please feel free to join the choir in singing God Bless America. Thank you all for joining us at our ceremony today. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with Thank <laughs> you. 